30 points higher on the Nifty. The Sensex is up about 80 odd points. The Nifty today is above the 17,750 mark. We have Nifty which is sitting at the day's high. 80 points higher on that one right now. Eighth consecutive day of gains. It's up half a percent on the benchmark indices. Midcaps don't want to be left behind. Midcaps moving in step with the front liners. The advanced decline ratio firmly in favor of the gaining side. Eighth day a day where important resistance levels, resistance levels have been taken out. Uh, 17,814 is what the board finally says. What a day it was. Uh, eighth day running and the Nifty has conquered multiple peaks over the last few trading sessions, including the likes of 17,300, 400, 500. And today, take your breath away, it was 17,800 on the index. Uh, let's see where we go from here, whether we run the risk of running into resistances or not. But let's talk about markets today, a show where we track about Six hours of free trading action in five headlines. Let's talk about those headlines then. The first one, of course, is the market because the Sensex and the Nifty gained for the eighth straight session. The pharmaceutical and financial stocks led the rally with gains. Mid-caps marginally outperformed the blue chips. Expectations of improvement in the fourth quarter margins owing to a decline in input costs propelled pharmaceutical stocks higher. Previous labs, export recovery and strong brokerage commentary on Bicon helped these two stocks lead the pack. Devis ended 10% higher. Stocks of sugar mill shine as the prices of raw sugar hits an 11-year high. This as unseasonal rains in India and lower supplies from other producing nations fuel prices. And in mid-caps making news, strong fourth quarter updates power Sula Vidyards and Purvankara ahead while a mega order buys uh, BHL and Titakar wagons. India Inc. however is cautious about global growth but bullish on the domestic market. Industrialists K.M. Birla TV Narendra and Venu Srinivasan and Sanjeev Bajaj say the global economy remains fragile but India will continue on its growth path. They expect the focus on infrastructure to keep the economy resilient. Let's tell you what we have uh, on the show for you in store in market opinion. We have Atul Suri, CEO of Marathon Trends PMS and in Big Corporate Voices. Sanjeev Bajaj, the CMD of Bajaj FinServe, TV Narendra and MD of Tata Steel among all the others that we have. So let's take it straight without further ado to the markets, uh, the day's trading action. Stock markets rose for eight straight session with the pharmaceutical and financial stocks leading from the front today. The Sensex gained over 200 points, uh, crossed past the 60,000 mark. The Nifty, too, was higher by about half a percent, crossed past the 17,800 mark. And on the day where the mid-cap index saw its weekly options expiry, the mid-cap index outperformed with nearly three stocks advancing for every two that were declining. For more details, Surabhi Upadhyay joins in with the wrap. Well, a very solid show by the bulls and fresh momentum, which meant that the market took out some very important levels today. The Nifty has managed to close above the 17,800 level. And the reason why this is very important is that this was a very important critical congestion zone, a resistance zone for the market. It was right here, right from this level, that the market had turned southwards on the 6th of March. So today, a decisive close above that level means that uh, the signals were very, very optimistic and positive on the upside. Uh, a couple of other reasons why today's day uh, really stands out. It's not just the eighth consecutive day of gains, but the gains were very well spread out, very diverse across sectors. It wasn't just one stock like a Reliance or one sector like banking. Today you had participation from pharma, from the auto space, broader financials, and uh, you had a couple of other names from the IT pack staging a bit of a comeback as well. The broader market, the mid-cap universe did very well. The mid-cap index actually outperformed the Nifty with a gain of almost seven-tenths of a percent. If you look at the Nifty contribution itself or the, the list of gainers, it'll illustrate that point on diversity that I'm talking about. So you have, of course, a, a Divis, which did extremely well today, 9% up on that stock, a Sipla. You have a couple of IT names like uh, Infosys, TCS closing up 1% ahead of its numbers, and auto names like Bajaj Auto continuing to make fresh 52-week highs. In fact, the only sector that was down today was FMCG with some names like an ITC and Nestle, which were down between 1% to 1.5%. Now, what next? The market has ended the day on the premise that it will wake up to softer inflation numbers, both in India, CPI numbers, uh, which we'll uh, see later in the evening, and of course, uh, US inflation, which comes out later tonight. Also, in case TCS can come out with positive commentary, and can sound a little more optimistic than uh, the, the very disenchanted view on the street, that could lead to some short covering and perhaps even fresh buying in the IT space. And IT could start emerging as a bit of a support pillar for the market. So all in all, good session, strong momentum, setting up for what looks like a very interesting end to the week. 
Absolutely. So let's talk about some market opinion coming in. Uh, Atul Suri of Marathon Trend says that it's a perfect time to identify the leaders of the next bull markets. And he believes that it's the best time to bet on capital goods. They, he believes, would be the leaders of the next bull run. Let's listen in. These sectors and themes not only make money for you in the short run, but I feel they become very big leaders of the next bull market. And that's, this is a great time to actually do that, to do that transition in your portfolio. Most people are sitting with the leaders of the last bull market. Mm. Every bull market throws new leadership. And in such times where there is no massive price moves, I think it's an excellent time to you know, churn. If you churn, I guess the next phase is favorable, or that's where you get outperformance. If you don't, you will say that, okay, the market's going up, but my portfolio is not going up. So even among cab goods engineering, it's a very big segment. Right. You'll find that electrical equipments, right? Now, you'll have to actually figure out, now, what is that? That's something very simple anyone can do. But you'll find that even in that, electric equipments is something that's doing very good. Okay. Then engineering per se as a sector. Remember, all cap goods is not engineering. If you take the subset of engineering, you'll find that that also is doing very well. So you'll find that there are some themes, but the important part is that most of these themes are pointing towards the industrials. All right, let's talk about the second headline now, but uh, the biggest gainers, the pharmaceutical stocks and the pink of health today has declined in input costs increase expectations of improved margins in the fourth quarter. Devi's Labs led the pack in how almost 10% gains today, and it's a nifty stock that we're talking about. After data for March so shows that recovery in exports is something that uh, may propel the stock and its business prospects going forward. Uh, Ekta joins in with the details of Devi's Labs and also Biocon. Ekta. The company is really reacting to export data ex Molnu Piravir for March, which has shown a recovery and is a piece of data which is followed very closely in terms of the sell side analysts uh, in the past couple of months. So it is indicative of the fact that in March 2023, they generated around $92 million in terms of export data versus around $70 million year on year. This is the highest that we've seen since Jan 2021 and is higher than the run rate of around $50 to $60 million. That that we've seen in the past couple of months. Now, the key point is that there is a bump up, which is likely by higher custom synthesis sales, supplies of an API uh, drug, uh, which is basically for, by, for to Novartis, which is used for heart failure. And that could have contributed as much as 15 to $17 million in the month of March. Remember that March generally could be one of data. We could sh see a push due to year-end sales. So one needs to see whether or not it is sustainable. But despite it being lumpy, it is indicative of the fact that maybe there could be a recovery which is taking place in the V sales X of Molnu Piravir. Remember, the stock has also fallen quite sharply over 30% from its 52-week high. At one point in time, it was really a darling of all of the investors especially during COVID-19 and uh, that possible interest is now coming back. There is also, remember, their margins which the street will watch quite closely. In Q3, it had fallen quite sharply. So a Q and Q recovery and sustainability of the margins is something that the street would watch quite closely. Well, yes, uh, you know, for Biocon, there are two brokerage notes which have really aided uh, sentiment today. So I'll start with Bofa, which has a buy, but they've cut the target price to 330 versus 390. According to them, the risk reward seems favorable at current levels. The concerns of a biosimilar market being like a generics market is also unwarranted. This other note on Biocon is by Bernstein, which has an outperform rating target price of 299. There are some highlights from a webinar which was held with the Biocon Biologics leadership team. This includes that the Viatris deal is to play the long-term biosimilars market integration did not require much rationalization. Management is looking to raise funds, but with the right partner at the right time, Further stake sale in Syngene is not in the mix right now. They are hopeful of launching key drugs such as insulin aspart by FI24. And the management, interestingly, is rethinking and redrawing contours of uh, the tie-up that they have with Serum. So that is something that the street would watch out for as well. All right, from medicines, we move on to sugar because that's the third headline today. Sugar mills, uh, in fact, sugar stocks shown today as uh, the price of raw sugar hits an 11-year high. This is on account of unseasonal rains in India and lower supplies from other producing nations as well. Uh, all of that fueled prices in the sugar uh, market for the raw sugar itself. And as a result of which, those who produce sugar, the likes of Sri Renuka, Varikesh and Dhampur, all of them were higher. For more details, we have uh, Surbhi with us. Surbhi. 
sugar prices in India have risen by approximately 7% in the past three weeks. And there are indications that they will continue to increase. Now, this price surge is driven by a combination of factors, including lower inventories and stronger demand. One of the primary reasons for the increase in the sugar prices is the fall in production. Additionally, the peak summer season has added to the increased demand for sugar, driving prices even higher. Another factor contributing to the price rise is the recent trend of ethanol production. Now, with the rise in ethanol production, sugar supply is being diverted to ethanol production, driving the prices even higher. All right, with that, uh, let's take a short break. Come back on the other side. We'll discuss all the other stocks that are making headlines.